Tuan Kecoh. 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 Tuan Tuan Kecoh. 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 Tuan K
ai cả sao mà phê ní có mà men chia cả một thố để trời lực vô một vị thị xa nó phê đại ai cả sao chẳng lấy miên và hai chia mà phê ai cả sao chỉ mỗi khi ní đại ai cả sao chẳng ní có miên ai cả sao đại chi ốp bát sầm pon mui đào ốp bát sầm pon pram phong đại ai cả sao chẳng lấy miên và hai chia đập pi ai cả sao được chưa này xã cà ray nhóm hay là nhóm năng mình lực là ai cả xa đây mà mình chỉ bật thiền bát sầm rập về này thế hay chỉ bật tóc nhóm sầm lực là ông pi rụp bài ca sầm nón bay đại miền sầm nón chương thà rụp bài ca vị phe rụp bài ca vị phe tim muối cứ thưa là ông đòi lục kreg echesan đại miền sầm nón chương thà tesna tiền ông pi thana nó cấm nay rụp bóp cam bị chia bị chia thập bát tài đại miên lấy ai cả xã đi pi tre đập rầm rụp bài ca này tây ban đặt tour mộc phơi chi phật tang rồi hai nó không sầm nòng riêng lấy sơn sơn mùi lục kreg echesan quạt thọ ban bắt đầu sẽ khay cam nơi không ăn sầm nà ca nơi sầm nòng riêng sơn 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 mùi ในกฎบานลึกล่างอัมพีรบายการนี่รวมแตงประพบสำคัญสำคัญในกฎบานลึกล่างสมเชยลูกมีตัวบีอันตรายเช็ดกาเปกได้ลูกยังจะรีสมขอบคุณทุกท่านครับสมขอบคุณทุกท่านครับสมขอบคุณทุกท่านครับสมขอบคุณทุกท่านครับ Your Honor, I specifically did not address that document because, as I understand, it's not part of the 95 document. Now, I don't see why the prosecution is going into those documents which were not on the list. Perhaps that could be done at some other point, but I don't think it is the purpose for this particular hearing. And given that there is only about an hour and ten minutes left. Uh, before we take a recess, uh, until we hear the next witnesses, I would strongly suggest that the prosecution be directed to address the 95 documents so that we can efficiently finish today. Thank you. Thank you. เออเอ่อได้ลึกจะให้ก็ตัวตุลเปียปอนนั่งแต่ไอ้กระซ่าจำนวนการสุปรามเอ่ออ่องจำเรียบบ้านจำเรียบจูนหรือเฮ้ย
thiên lòng vĩnh và đây đời ta nằm nằm tham đình nhà ai ta mình to càng như là bạc luôn hai bàn hai đây trên này hàng cầm bị vì nó mốc nằm nằm đầm đầu ní mạch lời tôm nằm ở vây đây dương bàn su mạnh mạnh như thế là xong mình chơi nằm nằm tham đình nhà anh đã chết nằm nằm tham đình nhà chết là xong học quân lục thiên chỉ mình to nhưng xong đã ai xa đã chia sai video dương khơi than nông nông cầm nót tra trường tổng phó này đại ca nó sai có bàn lược lang ông pi sai vì đậu môi môi chấm đôn phong đài hay sai vì đậu đài năng lược do một đạn nơi chấm phu một ông chấm đôn ra nó phê ní miền đồi chi ai cả xa lệ đi pi rồi cao sấp bốn chọc môi chọc đập bầm bốn ở sai vì đậu ní miền chấm nong trường thà campuchia slap nâng cao làng vinh sai về đâu này cứ chia cứ mà chạm một đô lại cả sang campuchia bàn đặt tour một kỳ và tiền là mòn hay sai về đâu mỗi tiết cứ ai cả sang lấy đi pi rồi cao sấp trăm slap pi slap pi chót hà sấp pi o sai về đâu này miền trung nông trường thà đầm na ta sẽ nạp cách rồi bỏ cả nạp pro được phu chân nâng mà lấy gì một căn cầm một chiếc một chiếc thật bật tay sai vì đồ này cứ chiếc sai phép dân ai cả xa để bàn phần lợi lạng đòi rõ thao và bà cầm một chiếc một chiếc thật bật tay nâng chân nằm ở bọn bằng bộ rồi chất sắp bằng môi hay sai vì đồ này bằng hai nhằm phí đầm na ta sẽ nạp cách rồi bỏ cả nạp pro được phu chân để miền lộc khiêu dùm phón lục nôn chia năng lục yên sở ri chỉ nẹt tụt đầm ná rồi bỏ cả nạp pro được phu phong đài nước nông sai vì đâu này phong đài có ban bằng hai năm pi cả nạp pro được phu prote malaysia đã miền lục khiêu sầm phón nôn chia yên sở ri năng yên thật chỉ nẹt tụt đầm ná rồi bỏ cả nạp pro được phu phong đài hay sai vì đâu này cứ tụt tụt ban một pi mà chạm một đầu sáu tụt bộ phan nà hay sai vì đâu mối tiếc cứ miền ai cả xa lệ pi rồi cao sấp trăm slap pi slap pi cho học sấp trăm o sai vì đâu này miền trầm nong trường thà đầm na ta sẽ nạ cách rồi bỏ bật thi ni thập bậc đấy bật thi lao với chúng mua sấp phan ở vùng một căn cam với chia với chia thập bậc tài sai vì đâu này cứ chia phép dân ai cả xa đại ban phần lợi lang đòi rót thay vị ban cam bồ chiêm chiêm thập bậc tái hay sai về ôn ấy bằng hai nhóm pi đầm nào ta sẽ nạp cách rồi bỏ phần thiên ấy thập bậc đại lá một căn cam bồ chiêm chiêm thập bậc tái nâng bằng hai nhóm pi nẹt đại tự tu đầm nào rồi bỏ cả nạp pro được phu đại nông nông miền lục khêu sầm phón lục nôn chiê lục yên sơ ri nâng yên thiệt rất bàn hai hôm nằm nè cái nạp product phu phong đài hay sai vì đâu này có bàn đặt tour một pi mà chạm một đô sao tour bộ phan nè ai ai cái sao tiếng này promo bàn đào dùng tập tam đại ca chặt ao sấp sôi chấm nước rồi bỏ cây ở lại sẽ chặt cầm sấp bằng kết nông nông ẩm long thay ti bầm pi khai sấy hai cho năm pi pon bầm bốn đào thay ti đập ram khai thác nấu năm pi pon bầm bồn sai vì đâu mối tiếc miền ai cả xa lệ đi pi rồi sam sấp pi slap mà rồi đắp chọc muối chọc muối chọc muối ó sai vì đâu miền trầm nong trường thà pol pot nơi bay cảng sai vì đâu này cứ chia rồi bài ca ai cả xa đây là một phí đầm nào ta sẽ nạc cách rồi bỏ phố phố tập can bỏ tế chân nó không thay cả nhà chứ nằm ở bọn bộ rồi chất sắp làm phí cứ chỉ phê về lý đại quát bán và các hàm phí ảnh thật phía rồi bỏ bạn cùng lý cam bởi chìa ai cả xa này có bỏ mô bán một phí đòi dôn tập tam đại ca chất ở sớm xô chùm nước rồi bỏ sợ cho cọm sớm bằng kết phòng đài cứ tập tu bán một phí mà chạm một đồ sọt tu bộ phán nào lớp bình tiết nước non ăn hết này đầm nát ta sẽ nạp cây rồi bỏ cả nạp pro được phu, tiếng này cứ trở bàn rì ca đòi ai cả sạp xem xem chỉ tràn tiết phong đài, 
ឧទាហរណ៍បើយើងមើលអំពីដំណើរតាសនៈកិច្ចរបស់គណៈប្រតិភូដែលជាប្រធានាធិបតីឡើងមកកាន់កម្ពុជាប្រជាធិបតេយ
let's turn to the commerce records. Approximately 38 of the documents listed in the footnotes and on this list are DK commerce records. The footnotes are used to support a part of paragraph 1144 of the closing order, which states Q Sampan received a large number of telegrams and communications from the Commercial Committee and the Phnom Penh Foreign Trade Portra Company covering topics such as the import and export of food and goods, the economic relations with foreign countries, and the fact that members of the Commercial Committee traveled to the Cambodian countryside to collect crops. Witness TCW 583, who worked in the Overseas Commercial Bank of Cambodia under the supervision of the Ministry of Commerce, identified and discussed 14 commerce documents during the course of interviews conducted by the OCIJ. Significantly, he identified the handwriting and signature of Van Rith, who was the DK Secretary of Commerce. This signature appears in many of the documents under the label DK Commerce Documents. Examples of documents include document IS-21.145. This document bears the signature of Van Rith as identified by witness TCW583. The document also bears the notation, quote, already sent to Brother Hem, unquote, Hem being the alias for Q Sampan. Another subset of these documents from the DK Commerce Records contain ledger entries regarding the use of 140 million yuans. Credit. These ledger entries are clearly identifiable as such. They provide an entry of the value of the contract of goods with China. They also provide entries for the cost of merchandise paid by the DK government using this credit. The documents contain the signature of Van Rith and an annotation stating already sent to Brothers Hem and Bourne. Witness TCW583 also confirmed that China provided credit to the DK government to establish the Overseas Commercial Bank and explained that the bank was required to prepare regular reports reporting goods that were exported and imported using the credit. Hence the ledger entries. The ledger entries are also sometimes accompanied. លោកចក្រមឡើងកាវិប្រឹកមិញគឺថាយើងពិនិត្យទៅលើថាតើឯកសារទាំងអស់នេះអាចទទួលយកមកពិនិត្យបានដែរឬទេគឺមិនមែន
Your Honor, I am looking at the documents to show you why they are reliable. That requires me to some extent to explore the structure of the document, what they look like, what sorts of information is contained in those documents. Without going into such matters, I really cannot fully show why these documents ought to be reliable. ต้องยอมรับเรียกปฏิเสธในการจับต่อระบบมีตัวบีการเพียงใดลูกคือสมพลใน The ledger entries are sometimes accompanied by detailed list of goods shipped and contracted for. Examples of such documents can be found at IS 21.114. These commerce documents also report on trade relations with other countries. Document IS 18.21, for example, is a report on a meeting with, quote, Korean comrades at the Ministry of Commerce. This report is also sent to respected and beloved brother Hem. Document IS 21.129 shows the ledger entries related to the use of the 140 million yuans. It also includes a balance sheet called Cambodia Commercial Transactions with other countries besides China and Korea. It shows that certain amounts of rice was exported to Madagascar. And there are imports from Yugoslavia. Document D-161-1.30 Brother Ham and Bong Won that Brother Won decided not to accept the offer. Please find a way to respond to Yugoslavs. Let me address the origin of these documents. They were collected by DC CAM in many cases from the National Archives. Many of these documents bear cataloging marks from those archives. As Yuk Chang testified here during his testimony, the originals of those documents can be viewed at the National Archives. The documents are Let me turn to another category of documents, and these I will call the French documents. These documents were provided by the French Foreign Ministry in response to a rogatory letter dated 13 March 2009. That's document D199. These documents were added to the case file by the OCIJ. Some. Oi, you too, ne. Some of the ในเลยเอกสารนั้นทั้งไอ้ใครชั่นนำไอ้บัญชีชั่วบ่าไอ้ไอ้ไม่ไม่นี่คือเมียนปัญหาโดยเฉพาะประเด็นต้นสมบั
the purpose why these documents were created can be found in an accompanying note in document D199-26 .2.105. The note states that taking into consideration the absence of diplomatic relations between France and Democratic Capuchia, as well as the absence of information on the subject of democratic Cambodia, the Asia-Oceania Division of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs considers it useful to provide a review of the internal and external relations of the new Cambodia. These reports contain information on visits by foreign diplomats, which leaders received these diplomats, as well as key events that were taking place domestically. Many of the events are corroborated by other accounts of the same visits, notably Fibis. Fibis. These documents have the same format. The top left hand corner of the first page contains a stamp of the ministry. Underneath that is the number of this particular review. On the top right hand corner of the first page, one can find a stamp of the Republic of France and the date. Another type of document also produced by the French government and also sent at the request of the OCIJ consists of telegrams from the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The format of these telegrams is quite consistent. Foreign Affairs is usually typed on the top right hand corner. The word déchiffrement is typed diagonally is across common. the top right-hand corner. An example can be found at document D199-26.2.29. This is a telegram from Arno. The subject is visit to China by Prime Minister of Cambodia. It discusses Pol Pot's visit to China. Arno is the author of many of these telegrams. Indeed, he sends another telegram related to this very same visit. That telegram can be found at document D199-26.2.29. This visit by Pol Pot to China was also reported elsewhere in the media, including the New York Times. Let's turn to document IS 5.30. This is an S. This is an S21 confession of Hunem, the Minister of Propaganda. The document is contained in a footnote to the first line of paragraph 883 of the closing order. That line states, the first Minister of Information and propaganda in the CPK regime was Hunem who was arrested and sent to S21 in April 1977. 
in the trial chamber's ruling of January 31, 2012, at paragraph 9, the trial chamber reiterated that evidence obtained through torture has limited uses. The use to which this document is being put is consistent with that ruling. It simply confirms that Hunem was sent to S21 and the date and the, and the month of his arrest. The document contains annotations. The Dutch Doik has confirmed that he annotated the letter which was written by Hunem that accompanied this confession. That letter is addressed to Pol Pot, Nguyen Chien, Yeng Seri, Nguyen Vet, Son Sen, and Kiu Sampan. Council for Yeng Seri has objected to a document called the Last Joint Plan. This document is cited in footnote 3782 and 3783 of the closing order. The document number is E2888-228-229-229. The relevant portion of the closing order states, quote, in addition, to the above, Nguyen Chair became de facto secretary of two zones after the arrest of their secretaries. It appears that following the arrest on 20 September 1976 of the North East Zone Secretary, Men San, alias Ya, this role was filled by Om Neng, alias alias Wong until mid-1978 and then by Nguyen Chia for a short period. This document is an analysis of confessions at S21. The analysis was conducted by Pon, who was Doik's chief interrogator. This analysis weaves the various confessions into a massive interconnected plot. The document was discussed in the trial of case 001. During that trial, Doik confirmed that this document was produced at S21 and was authored by Pon. Let me now address some of the specific objections raised by defense counsel. Let's turn to document D177 slash 3.1. This document is called Timeline Chart Comparing Yang Seri's Foreign Travel During the Period of Democratic Camp with S21 Records of Arrest and Execution of MFA Staff. This document brings together into a different coherent form information that can all be found in numerous documents already on the case file. The way to challenge this document is to show why the timeline is incorrect. At this time, in indeed, Yang Sari was not there. That was not done. The document is not done. An objection was also made to what was called Stephen Header material. It was argued that Stephen Header had not only drafted the introductory submission, he then proceeded to investigate it. Stephen Header left 
OCP in Steven December 2006. The introductory submission was written during the second quarter of 2007 and submitted in July 2007. Stephen Hedder did not write it. Stephen Hedder did not write it. Stephen Hedder had not written it. Stephen Hedder had not written it. Two documents related to Stephen Hedder were cited. One was D29 slash I attachment 33 and D366 slash 7.1.562. These documents are part of Annex 1. And Annex 1 was argued in the first document hearing. There was an objection that witness interviews not conducted by OCIJ ought not to be admitted. Again, in accordance with document E170, this document here excludes written witness statements. I note, however, that counsel for Nguyen Chea objected to witness statements from Ok Ban Chun, Sim Ka, Che Sim, and Heng Samrin. Witness statements from these very same people were included in their recent filing of January 31, 2012, in which they sought to put witness statements of these very same people before the chamber. Other objections related to Fibis reports, to revolutionary flag, to standing committee minutes, all of those were covered under Annex 1 to 5 in the first document hearing. Where many documents from one source were corroborated with documents from various others where their formats were discussed at some extent and detail. There was an objection to document D56 DOC.103. This is an accused statement. Council wanted Mr. Bernstein to come and provide testimony before this document could be admitted. Accused statements fall under Annex 1 and as such were discussed during the first document hearing. But I also point out point out that when you have, when you read the accused statements, you will see that the accused say the same thing again and again. Their statements are always consistent. There were objections to international media reports. Objection was made to document D108 slash 43 slash 7. This is a FIBIS report. I discussed FIBIS reports during the last hearing. Another document objected to was D108 slash 43-9. This document is a summary of world broadcasts created by the BBC, also discussed during the last document Objection was made. Objection was made to document D56. 
slash DOC.066. This is an international media report. It is called 9th Anniversary of Founding of Revolutionary Army. This was from the Peking Review of 28 January 1977. This document is corroborated by two other documents. The first one is document D313-1.2.2. This document is a summary of world broadcasts. It reports on the celebration for this anniversary and that Nguyen Chia and Chi Sampan attended. The document is further corroborated by document D248-6.1.1. This document is also a summary of world broadcasts, but this one contains a fairly extensive excerpt from the speech given by Nguyen Chia as acting prime minister. This document is dated January 20, 1977. Your Honor, those are my submissions. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, 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 could I have one minute to make a brief reply to the remarks of the co-prosecutor with respect to our documents, documents from the Nguyen Chia list? I, I understand that, Your Honor. This was a request to make a reply. Oui, Monsieur le Président, Madame et Messieurs les juges, mes confrères et tout le monde ici, quelques observations très rapides euh, à la suite des objections générales qui ont été faites aujourd'hui. Ma première observation euh, est la suivante et elle ne surprendra personne. Je crois que nous examinons aujourd'hui 95 documents qui sont des notes de bas de page de l'ordonnance de clôture des juges d'instruction. Et je dirais une fois de plus que il me semble que euh, ces documents ont été examinés attentivement par des juges professionnels et que leur fiabilité, leur authenticité et leur pertinence ont été jugées suffisamment sérieuses pour que les juges d'instruction utilisent ces documents pour étayer leur ordonnance de clôture, laquelle était susceptible de recours. Il y en a eu un d'ailleurs et laquelle a fait l'objet d'une décision ensuite de la Chambre préliminaire. Je crois que c'est avec cette vision générale, cet éclairage général qu'il faut examiner les objections. Ma seconde observation est la suivante. J'ai noté que les objections qui étaient faites aujourd'hui étaient pour une grande part 
des objections dont nous avons déjà discuté lors de la précédente audience sur les documents. Par exemple, l'objection sur le fait que l'on souhaite voir produits les originaux, ou bien les objections sur le fait que les documents provenant de DCCAM ne seraient pas suffisamment fiables, ou bien l'objection qui consiste à dire qu'il faudrait entendre à tout prix l'auteur d'un document, et notamment d'un livre ou d'un interview d'un article de journal. Une objection que nous avons également entendue déjà dans la première discussion sur les documents est celle relative à la chaîne de conservation des documents émanant des archives nationales. Donc nous avons déjà discuté de tout cela et nos observations, bien sûr, sont les mêmes. Et nous invitons chacun à se reporter à ce que nous avons déjà dit sur le sujet. Ma troisième observation est la suivante. Je ne pense pas qu'il suffise de dire, par exemple, que des déclarations hors cadre judiciaire ne seraient pas fiables pour effectivement démontrer qu'elles ne sont pas fiables. Je crois que si on veut discuter des déclarations hors cadre judiciaire, par exemple, il faut, il faut au moins démontrer en quoi cette fiabilité ou cette présomption de fiabilité qui a été retenue par les pourrait aujourd'hui être mise en cause. Et je constate que la défense ne fait pas une fois de plus cette démonstration. J'avais une autre observation qui tient, euh, mais qui est un peu, non pas une réponse aux objections, mais qui est une observation particulière à un groupe de documents. Il y a dans les 95 documents qui nous ont été soumis, 37 documents, qui relève de l'annexe 7 de, de, des coprocureurs qui a trait aux documents émanant du ministère du Commerce. Il nous semblait pour notre part que pour une bonne administration de la justice, il aurait peut-être été intéressant de discuter de ces 37 documents dans le cadre de l'annexe 7 puisque, si j'ai bien compris, cette annexe sera discutée un jour. Je vais faire cette parenthèse. Et je voudrais enfin faire une dernière observation sur les professions, puisque une profession est produite au débat, mais je crois que nous sommes tous d'accord sur la position à tenir, y compris la Chambre, me semble-t-il. Je crois que nous sommes des avocats de partie civile, nous sommes avant tout des avocats, et nous souhaitons, en ce qui nous concerne, une application stricte de l'article 15 de la Convention sur la torture. Nous avons noté que la Chambre a rappelé sa position dans, euh, le document du 30, dans le mémorandum du 31 janvier, qui était sa position en mai 2009, laquelle consiste à dire que l'on peut utiliser ces documents pour démontrer qu'il y a eu la torture, mais non pas pour le contenu. Bien sûr, nous soutenons cette position et nous avons entendu qu'il en était de même pour les procureurs à l'instant. Voilà les quelques observations que je souhaitais faire en ce qui concerne. Je ne sais pas si mon confrère souhaite intervenir à la suite. Merci. Je crois qu'il n'y aura pas d'autres interventions de la partie civile sur les documents. Merci. Mbak Elani Daita 
ហើយមិនយើងឃើញថាមិនមានវិធីការពីក្រៃលោកនិនជាមានបំណងអញ្ចឹងធ្វើដីតបចំពោះកាអធិបាយរបស់ក្រុមសព្រិញ្ញាហ